Hey Cancer, welcome to your love and romance reading for December 2021. This is going to be for Cancer Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. I know a lot of people like to check out their Venus sign when it comes to love and romance. So I also include the intention always for the Venus sign as well when I'm doing the love readings. For those of you who don't know, every week I do a weekly forecast where I talk about everything other than love. So if you want to check in other areas of your life... Be sure to check out the weekly forecast. We're going to see what's happening here with our dear friends. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for love and romance. Love and romance, December 2021. One more shuffle here. All right. Let's get right on into it, my dears. So the first card coming up for you is the death card some of you could be dealing with a scorpio or if you have a scorpio placement there could be big changes happening for you in that area of your life or if you have like a certain like you have scorpio in like a certain house as you're focusing on that house or as you're doing things in that area of your life it could be opening the door for a new relationship now obviously the death card can indicate a time of transition and a time of change, right? It could be one door closing and a new door opening. So some of you might be feeling like it's time to step away from a relationship, okay? Some of you are feeling this because you are going through uh, what is referred to as ego death. Sometimes the death card for me indicates ego death. And so say like you're trying to date or you're single and you're trying to meet people and you might be feeling kind of discontent. Like, I just, I don't get it. Like, I should be crazy about this person, but I'm not feeling it. I'm not excited about them right? You might be feeling like your type is changing because you're changing, you're healing, you're evolving, you're coming into a different frequency. So don't be surprised, Cancer, if in the month of December, all of a sudden you find yourself being attracted to something very different or feeling like, for some of you, this could even be someone that's just like right under your nose this whole time that you had never even thought about in that way but you guys are are um aligning like you guys are ascending and like vibrationally you're you're aligning and so a lot of the times we end up being attracted to the people that are going to trigger us or hurt us or stir up, you know, old wounds or insecurities when we haven't done your healing. So you may have really been doing your healing and evolving. So now your type is changing and you're not going to be attracted to people that are making you feel uh, less than or that are like triggering you in some way, but rather you're being attracted to um, something much better for you. For whatever reason, that death card is giving me the sense of the feeling that your type is changing. And this can be challenging. This can be challenging if you're in an existing committed relationship, you know, because now you're like, I don't find this attractive anymore. And I'm finding myself being pulled in this new direction. I'm finding myself, you know, wanting something very different. Uh, chances are because the death card is here. Chances are if you are in a relationship and you're feeling this way, your person is probably feeling this too. Because when I see the death card, it's like the natural end of something. Like, like, like it's run its course. It, it, it's gone as far as it can go. And uh, now it's time for something new uh, to be you know, born from it. So... The fact that the death card is coming at the foundation here makes me feel like your person may also be feeling this way. If you're completely and totally single, I just feel this is the ego death. This is the phoenix rising from the ashes. This is you coming back um, with renewed energy and you finding yourself being attracted to something very different than what you typically would be attracted to. Your next card coming up here is the Four of Swords. And the Four of Swords can indicate for me in my readings that emotionally, mentally, physically, sometimes even spiritually, you have been through the ringer. 
Like you are exhausted, you are tired, you are like, you feel like, man, I am done for, right? Like I need to rest, I need to recover, I need to catch my breath here and process what I've been through. So some of you are needing some time before you make a final decision. And sometimes in relationships, uh, the four of swords can indicate a trial separation or time apart, okay? Um, if you're single, four of swords can be that you're processing what is coming up for you in this ego death and you are, uh, releasing. Okay. You're like gathering your strength. You're getting your strength back again, again, right? That Phoenix bird, it crashes. You've been through the crash and now you're, you're, you're mustering up the energy. You're, you're recharging, you're rejuvenating, you're, uh, you're smoldering here before you come shooting up out of the ashes, this bird on fire. But the four of swords is going to indicate a time of rest, a time of stillness. Some of you may be going on some kind of a retreat, not just a vacation, not just a trip, but something in which you're doing this to find yourself. You're like, I need to go back home to reconnect with my roots and just kind of hit the reset button. Or I'm going to go and I'm going to take this uh, meditation retreat. Or I'm going to go do this shaman retreat. Or um, I'm going to take this training. Uh, and so some of you might be doing something spiritual, some kind of a, a spiritual program or spiritual retreat. Um, which is opening the door for love in your life. You might even be meeting a person at that retreat or on that trip, okay? But overall, the Four of Swords is going to be telling us that it's a time of resting and rejuvenating. Spirit is like really emphasizing, like Spirit is saying, Amethyst, you have to say this. This is really important. You have to say this. It's really important. So this isn't going to be for every single one of you Cancers. I want to really emphasize that. But there is a certain group of you that Spirit is like saying, you need to tell them to stop right now because they're blocking themselves. And it's the easiest thing to stop doing and to stop blocking themselves. They need to stop doing it. Some of you are just maybe even doing this on autopilot without even realizing that you're doing it, but you are, um, you, you're like listening to like really sad music, like really sad, uh, breakup songs or songs where it's like, I don't need you. I don't need anybody. I'm going to survive, you know, like that kind of thing. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with those kinds of songs. They're a part of our, um, they're a part of our, uh, experiences in life, right? It's something that we experience. So it's not something that's going to be, uh, like, like bad. Okay. Uh, but it's something that we don't want to stay in that energy too long. We don't want to stay in that energy forever. We want to be able to get it out of our system and then focus on new love coming in. So if you're catching yourself um, watching sad movies or listening to these sad songs, you know, maybe once upon a time it resonated with you because you went through it. But now you need to listen to the songs and watch the movies that show and express what you want to feel what you want to attract, the situation that you want to be in. And say that you are sad or heartbroken, but you're also feeling like, I want love. I don't want to be on a break too long. I want to heal from my broken heart, but I want something new to come in. Um, <laughs> I'm maybe dating myself here with these movies, guys. Um, and I, I open, I open the comments for you guys to make your suggestions of a book or a song or movie that you think is along the lines of what I'm about to say. I'm terrible. I, I'm, I'm like a hermit. I don't really watch television. I don't really watch m many movies. I have a few old favorites that I, that I'll watch on repeat. So I'm kind of, you know, out of date here, but um, I'm thinking of like uh, 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 The Wedding Singer or Diary of a Mad Black Woman or um, 
What was the other one? What was the other one? I really liked. I can't think of it. But there was a lady and it was like a group of married uh, friends. And there was this lady and her husband like totally dumped her and like made her feel really crappy. But then like she ended up, you know, finding like a perfect relationship. And she was stabbed in the back because the husband was sleeping with her friend. And it was just all this. I, I can't really know the movie. But, you know, like those things where maybe the character goes through heartbreak. You you see them get their heart ripped out and they're sad and it's like, you know, uh, very broken hearted energy. But then you also see them find somebody new. You see them being happy again. You see them in a good relationship. So maybe focusing on those kinds of songs or those kinds of uh movies where you can get the heartache out of your system but you can also be open to like you know what there's still love out there and I'm gonna find it so some of you just have to be very cautious of the entertainment you're taking in right now the next song next song <laughs> DJ Amethyst coming at you the next card the next card that we have coming up here is the seven of pentacles okay so seven of pentacles lets us know that you have been doing a good job and you need to relax a little bit and as we say leave some room for the holy spirit okay when the seven of pentacles comes in you're trying to improve a situation you're putting a lot of focus in it you're putting a lot of energy into it but it's possible to overwork a seed. If you go and you plant a seed and you're constantly going and you're checking on it and it hasn't grown it and you're watering it, you're going out again, oh, it hasn't grown out and you're, wa you're watering like 10 times a day. You're like, oh, well, maybe it just, it doesn't like the spot. Maybe I need to take it out and find it and plant it somewhere else. Like if you do that, that poor little seed is never going to have a chance to grow because you're going to smother it, right? So the seven of pentacles is saying <clears throat> do your part do your work and then just allow time and spirit to come in and to do the rest okay so like for example say that you're really ready for a new relationship and you're really stressed out because you're like oh my gosh i'm in the middle of this crazy time in the world where we're all kind of, you know, not able to move around and we're not able to socialize and I'm never going to be able to meet a person because of um, how the dynamic is and I can't go places to meet people and I keep meeting weird people online or I'm meeting people online who don't want to meet in person and, and you're just like, you, you, you're feeling like you're stuck and so you're trying really hard to find a way out of that or to make it work when i see seven of pentacles in a love reading even in an existing relationship you know maybe you're trying to uh, get the spark back with your partner maybe some of you feel like this relationship is ending and, and 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 it's scaring you and you're wanting to salvage it seven of pentacles says don't overwork it when i see seven of pentacles in a love reading it reminds me of um how <clears throat> love is gonna be attracted to vibration to frequency to energy like when a, a a rose bud blooms and opens up right that little rose bud opens up fully to be the rose that bee is gonna pick up the scent in the air and come find the rose and it's going to do what it needs to do for both of them, to keep both of them alive and both of them thriving. The rose doesn't open up and say, holy crap, I need to get pollinated. I need to be pollinated so that my uh, life cycle can continue. I don't see any bees. Uh, the rose doesn't grow feet and smack on some sneakers and start running around looking for bees. Oh, I, thought, I, th I, th I, th I think I saw a hive over there. Oh, that might look like a good place where some bees might be hanging out. No, the rose just does its thing, okay? And this applies to you whether you are male or female, masculine or feminine. When you're in your vibration, when you're in your frequency, I'm getting really freaked out right now because I'm smelling, I'm smelling cologne and I don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> it's like it's freaking me out right now, guys. 
There's like phantom cologne coming in. I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. I don't know if that means anything to any of you, but I'm smelling cologne. Ooh, wow. It's like, it smells good too. I don't know where it's coming from. Um, but as I was saying, uh, the rose doesn't run around looking for this person or this bee. The bee finds the rose. So when you're in your element, you're doing your thing. You're just, you're living your life. You're doing what makes you happy. You're enjoying yourself. Uh, this is going to attract love to you quite effortlessly. So this could even be in an existing relationship. Instead of trying to win your partner over or rehash the past and try to apologize for things that have already been apologized for or trying to talk about issues or analyze stuff and like j j just beat something, uh, you know, pummel it to the ground. If you can be in your element, if you can be in your joy, that is going to be the most magical aphrodisiac of all, right? That's going to be what puts you in the mood. That's going to be what makes your person look over at you and say, I'm starting to remember why I married you. Or I'm starting to remember what drew me to you. Or man, I'm seeing that fire in your eyes that I haven't seen in years, right? That's the fire in your eyes that, that made me, you know, uh, step up to you in the beginning, right? And so for some of you, even though there's a sense of ego death, there's a chance of like reacquainting. There's this chance of starting over, right? Because as I said, your person might be feeling the same way. This could be mutual because you guys are going through the same process. So for those of you that are at this weird crossroads in a relationship, there's a chance to salvage it. But it's by each of you being in your element and being in your joy. It's not about, well, here's what you need to change about you. And here's what I don't like. And here's what I... Sometimes we talk about something so much that we take all joy out of it. It's just like we have a headache and we're just done and we're drained. So do your work and let time and energy and frequency and spirit do the rest. You don't have to overwork the situation, okay? If you're single and you're really worried right now, you're like, I don't know how I'm going to meet somebody. <clears throat> we keep hearing about all these different variants and there's all these things with the jabs and not getting jabs and I don't know if I'm going to stay in my job. I don't know if I'm going to be, you know, stuck inside my house, not able to go anywhere. And you're worried about not being able to meet somebody. It will come to you. Okay, it will come to you, but you need to be in your element. You need to be in what comes naturally to you that you're enjoying, that you're like, oh, I like waking up today. I'm looking forward to doing this. Even if it's small things, like I'm looking forward to reading the next chapter in that interesting book um, when I'm done with work today, or I'm really looking forward to coming home and, uh, you know, doing my uh, painting or my writing or listening to my music or cooking or baking or whatever it is you enjoy doing. The more you're doing things that you enjoy doing, the more it's raising your uh, vibration, the more it's raising your frequency and opening you up to receive. So it doesn't have to be where you have to strategically figure out where to meet people or you have to go and give yourself some extreme kind of makeover. None of that is necessary. The next card that's coming in for you is the Wheel of Fortune. And this is a major arcana card. So when the major arcana cards come up for me, it's like a new chapter, right? It's a significant situation. Oftentimes, there's a strong past life connection. You guys are meeting for a specific reason. Um, and so here the death card, as I said, is that rebirth. Uh, that, that, that ego death, that uh, phoenix rising from the ashes. And then the wheel card is about getting unstuck, breaking out of stagnant energy, getting moving, getting going, okay? Some of you are dealing, from, uh, are dealing with a heartache because you've had a false, um, uh, a false alarm or a close call, right? Like that Smith song, last night I dreamt that somebody loved me. 
no hope, no harm, just another false alarm. You know, you might have had a situation where you really thought something was going to move forward with somebody, but it didn't. And you're like, well, man, like that really kind of like, I really could see myself with that person. And you might be feeling sad or disappointed. Sometimes our fire goes out. And we can't manifest when our fire is out. And so we need someone to come in and relight our fire. Or we just get stuck, we get stagnant. And we need that, that I call it the dangling carrot, like the old cartoons, the old Bugs Bunny cartoons. There's a horse that doesn't want to move. And so the cartoon character ties a carrot to a stick and, and hangs it in front of the horse. And all of a sudden the horse starts chomping at the bit, trying to get to the carrot, chasing after it, and they get moving. So for some of you, you had, I'm not even going to say a karmic relationship with this person, but this person came in to get you moving. This person came in to get you like realizing that, hey, I do want love. Hey, I do want a relationship. But in that stagnant energy, it's going to be really hard to manifest somebody that's going to keep you happy. That's going to give you what you need. That's going to fulfill you. And so you needed the, an in-between person to come in to get you out of that stagnant energy. To get you unstuck. I feel some of you within an existing relationship or partnership, um, it's like you're finding that the relationship or the partnership is becoming stronger as you both have your things that you're working on. You both have your things that you're... Uh, making a, a hobby or a project or a business. Um, it, it's keeping things interesting here. It's keeping things interesting here. For some reason, I feel like some of you feel like you have to leave a relationship because of the lack of children. Either because one of you doesn't want to have kids or your kids are grown and they've left the nest. Or um, you can't have kids and you haven't been able to adopt. I feel like for some of you, you're like, I have to leave this relationship because we have nothing to talk about. We have nothing to talk about. We have nothing keeping us together. At least if there were kids here, we'd have something we were both focusing on. And you're like, well, I don't know what we're both going to focus on. But Spirit is saying here, you're going to each have your thing that you're focusing on your interest, your hobby, your project, your passion. And this is going to give you plenty to talk about. It's going to give you enough distance and enough space to where you guys aren't driving each other crazy. And it's going to give you something to talk about when you're together. And it's going to give you a sense of joy in your life, a sense of happiness in your life. So I feel like you're having to shift or adjust the way you're looking at the situation. Those of you that you've been single for a long time or you've been feeling stuck in terms of finding somebody new, the wheel card says that it's that, that stagnation is over. The period of stagnation is over. The block is over. The next card that's coming up here is the Nine of Cups, and this is wishes coming true. If I'm not mistaken, I believe this also came up for Taurus. So if you have a Taurus placement, this could be something that's being emphasized for you. Some of you may be dealing with a Taurus because that was their last card, was the Nine of Cups. And so this is wishes coming true, a wish being fulfilled, something that you've been longing for, something that you've been wanting. It's actually happening. It's coming in for you. So your ideal situation, your ideal relationship, your love wish is being granted. But some of you might have heard me say this in previous videos before. The Nine of Cups comes in for me with homework. It says, look, your wish is about to come true. But there are going to be people on the outside of the situation looking in. And when they see this blessing coming in for you, they're going to have some jealousy. They're going to have some envy. And they're going to be looking at you like... You know, um, you don't think that, like, um, you think you're all that now, right? Like, you landed this new life, you landed this new relationship, 
Um, they might even talk about you. For some of you, for some reason, Cancer, I feel like this person is very, very attractive. Okay? Or you're becoming very attractive. Or your partner is becoming very attractive. But I feel there's this sense of like this renewed energy and being with somebody very attractive. And so if I feel like people are talking and saying, oh, you're so shallow. Oh, well, look, you left that one relationship and you just wanted to quote unquote upgrade uh, for somebody that looks like that. Or, oh, you've been together so long and you're making your partner you know, change for you because you're giving them a hard time about their appearance or uh, you're so shallow that, you know, you're having this midlife crisis and you're changing the way that you look. Meanwhile, right, nobody's forcing anybody to do anything. So I don't know why I'm getting a sense of attractiveness, but I feel like people are like shaming you for that shaming you for becoming more, you know, uh, conventionally attractive or shaming you for um, being with somebody that's considered very conventionally attractive. Uh, but so with the homework here, it's like you have to be ready to know that people are going to talk and to just not care about it. Don't let it ruin your happiness. Okay, don't let it ruin your happiness. For me, the Nine of Cups is saying your wish is coming true, but you have to keep reminding yourself that you deserve it, that you're worthy of it, that you deserve to have it, and you don't need permission from anybody else to receive it. Okay, you may want to check out your moon sign, your rising sign, your Venus sign, if this is none of those for you. Some months that might resonate for you more than your sun sign. You may need a private reading, which I'm more than happy to do for you. If you go to calendly.com slash amethystangelite, you can schedule a private reading with me there. I thank you all for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. I'm wishing you all a wonderful month, my dears. Hopefully, I'll see you all in the weekly uh, forecasts as well. Take care.